The first stage of explaining the passage of a nerve impulse along an axon is going to be to establish resting potential. To do this, we're going to use the sodium potassium pump represented in yellow there, which is going to pump the sodium ions Na plus outside of the axon and the potassium ions K plus inside the axon. These ions are going to move by active transport through the sodium potassium pump, so this is going to require energy in the form of ATP. The net result of these actions is going to be, as you can see, that the inside of the axon is relatively negative while the outside of the axon is relatively positive. You can see this by the relative amounts of chloride ions and potassium ions in the inside, whereby chloride ions are outnumbering the potassium ions. Now when a nerve impulse is sent, we call the nerve impulse the action potential and this phase is referred to as depolarization. So what's happening here is that the sodium channels are going to open and the sodium is going to rush to the inside of the axon. So please note that this is not using the sodium potassium pump, but it's using the sodium channel this time that allows the sodium ions to flow in when it's open. The channel for the sodium ions is represented in pink. The net result is that the inside of the axon becomes relatively positively charged. After the action potential and depolarization comes repolarization. This time you're going to have the potassium channels open and allow for a rush of potassium to the outside of the axon. This is ultimately going to lead us to the inside of the axon becoming relatively negatively charged and the outside of the axon becoming relatively positively charged. Again, you can see this as a case as there are more chloride ions and sodium ions on the inside of the axon. Now the interesting point to note here is that although you've returned the relative charges to the way they were at resting potential, you have your sodium ions on the inside and your potassium ions on the outside when at resting potential they were in fact the other way around. This means, therefore, that you can't send an action potential, and you also can't send it because the sodium channels are closed. So as you've been watching, you will have seen the sodium ions being moved back to the outside, the potassium ions being moved back to the inside via the sodium-potassium pump, and this returns us to the resting potential that we had at the beginning in stage 1. Now in terms of how this action potential actually moves down along the axon, you can see here that the voltage gated ion channels for potassium and sodium open when they detect a reversal in the membrane potential near them. And finally, this graph is going to show the variation in the membrane potential as an impulse or action potential passes down an axon. The x-axis represents time and the membrane potential is that found on the inside of the axon. And so we see resting potential 1, depolarization 2, repolarization 3, and a return to resting potential 4. Now to see if you really understand it, sketch this graph, go back to the beginning of the video, and explain how the membrane potential in steps 1 through 4 varies on the inside of the axon.